Okay, well, we are at episode nine. Thank you for joining us. Hello. I'm Athena. I guess I'm too, I don't, I don't talk loud enough. No, <coughs> you talk just fine. Okay. So, uh, we have just passed through another journey in the company history, and it's amazing how when I look back, I see all of the different places that we've been and not just like places in our life to travel, but the, the places that we've actually operated our business out of. So, uh, Charlie, what I'm hoping to share with the listeners today is how important it is to really what you're surrounding yourself with and the courage to step into new opportunities, even when it looks a little scary. So we started well, with, um, with our smaller operation and, and, outgrew it well, i think that's been almost everywhere we've gone so it's grown up to a you know a much different fleet and much different size employees than we had last in the previous year so thinking all the way back when we used to be that little lot there next to perfectionist and over there off a of diamond oh gosh that. i totally forgot about <laughs> I forgot that place the, yeah so we had that place and that was just a, a lot that, that was just a lot to put for our, the, the landscaping company landscaping plowing all the other stuff and then yep. we had the stuff over at bill allen's place before that when we first were there mm, yeah. and then we went over to 54th and arctic and that was our location for shoot what 12 13 years 15 years 15 years we were there you know uh, and that was really where we established bac and where that became that was like our space we even lived in it we extent. did we had an apartment above it so i mean you know there's been all these milestones of different places that we've gone and what we've done and you know now <clears throat> as we left 54th which was just a great place for us and but we definitely outgrew it we were using the people's parking lot across the street oh. and then we rented another parking lot and then we had cars parked down Up the street and down the road so you know everything is timing i think um you know a capital that we had to move and money and pouring money back into the company. It was just baby steps. And now uh, being at 100th, I think, was it seven years we were at 100th? About that. About seven years at 100th uh, property. I say 100th and C Street. That was our our last um, location before our new street. Um, it was a big change for us. I mean, it, it came with a, a, warehouse, a warehouse that was 8,000 8, square feet, mm -hmm. had six bay doors, so a lot of room for us to work on things, be able to pull things inside and and then um, with a 5,000 square foot office, that was enough room for us to spread out, which we used immediately. And yeah, we it, spread out immediately. <laughs> it was a large building. And I remember the dispatchers, they were just working on top of each other. And we had cars parked just bumper to bumper up the streets when we were at 54th. And, and you know, the relationship that we had with the owners of that building when we first moved there, out. like I just, I appreciate them so much. They were great. They were easy to work with. You know, what bums me out is that we never got to buy that building. They would always tell us they wouldn't sell us the building. And that was kind of, that was their nest egg. And then after being there for so long and such good tenants and taking care of their property, they, when we moved out, they didn't know what to do and they couldn't find a good enough tenant. They felt that were there. So they sold it to Ron Bailey and I helped them broker the deal. Um, because I called Ron up and Ron's got like a little monopoly over there. He's got yeah, his, that street is the he's, Ron, Ron street. He's got the big place, the Bailey's furniture on one corner, And then he bought all these little places there. And yep. I felt like he kind of, uh, it was like monopoly. He bought all Baltimore, Mediterranean, and he was going around the Oriental. And then all of a sudden he was at park place when he had, uh, when he had his uh, property uh, on uh, C Street and uh, International with Bailey's. Of uh, a large warehouse. Yeah. So, I mean, I would have loved to have owned that place. That would have been a great place to put Alaska Medical Transport. That would have been a perfect place for the apartment down below and a little office. No. But anyways, it all worked out for yeah. what it is. So <clears throat> now we're leaving 100th. And 100th turned into be a great property um, because we got the just stored business out of it. So we had the storage yeah. business. And you know, we never even thought about having a storage business until we had all this property there and yep. everybody was saying, Hey, you got some I room. Park, can we can park, I park it? some stuff there? And we had a friend, Adam Osip that parked their stuff for about a year and a half for free. Oh. And we didn't realize it. And we're like, Hey, we can be getting revenue off this. And then other people started approaching us. And all of a sudden we had a storage lot business. And I think we had 437 customers total. Yeah. And you know, um, plus all of the stuff that we had on that lot as, as well, that ended up becoming, because the property was so large, it was like the Bach Boneyard. And it was a catch-all. <laughs> and um, one thing that I learned uh, earlier on when we were upgrading to our, our houses and our houses were getting bigger and bigger is that stuff would go in, but it wouldn't come out. Uh, 
Well, and we, we took care of that problem at we're leaving a hundredth. Uh, so as we were leaving a hundredth, uh, we didn't have the room for our bone yard anymore. Nope. Not my ladder truck, not my fire truck, not my three extra ambulances, the old limo buses. I mean, it was just went on and on and on of old stuff that we just carried on to. And um, so we had a big auction and Dan Newman with Alaska premier Alaska Auctions. premier auction came in and gave us a great hand and went over and, uh, and sold all of our stuff that we needed to get rid of. And, you know, we did good on the auction. I felt very comfortable about it. It was pretty seamless for it. Um, you know, that is something is it's like when you're ready, the opportunities show up, like the sure. guides show up, the helpers show up. And just like when we left 60 or West 54th, 54th and Jack and Rita were clear they didn't want to sell. And so we were like, okay, well, we're, we're, we're too big now. We we're outgrowing. It's not good. And, and then they were like, okay, we're going to, we're going to, we, well, what do we do? And it was like, I almost feel like they were like our aunt and uncle in some way where we're trying to help them. And you jumped into action and you had that place sold in like three days where you're just thinking, well, there was just other, other people wanted to, when they couldn't find a viable tenant, nor could we help them find a viable tenant that was going to take care of the property. And <clears throat> Jack and Rita were retired. They weren't yeah. wanting to jump into a role and they had it pretty easy with us. They didn't have to uh, do, anything. do anything. I mean, we just sent the rent <laughs> checks and everything was taken care yep. of and we took care of the building. So um, <clears throat> I think they realized they had a really good thing and we had a good thing with them too. They kept our rent very, very reasonable. It was so low. Oh my gosh. We're so grateful. It was so low at the time we needed it. To yeah. Be we needed to be because we weren't in the position we are now. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, so good things out of that. And then went to 100th and then, you know, that was a great place for some time. And then, um, you know, the, I, I felt like that was a stretch for us because we were doubling our, our rent basically. Oh, almost tripling. I mean, when you talk to utilities and everything else. Yeah, like that I guess was, you're right. Yeah. 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 Because the utilities are thousands of dollars. Yeah. And uh, so we really had to step into, yeah, this is, this is going to be an investment for our business. And I really, when we jumped to that large of a building, I didn't realize how important it was to have room to expand. And I'm not talking about people that are in a situation where they have an opportunity to expand, but they don't need, need the room right now. And that reminds me of um, somebody that you know, that sometimes people call you and they're, they're, they're like your mentees and they ask you questions and sometimes it's not the right time to expand and spend the extra money. And, and for us, we both agreed that it was the right time and the investment was right. And I feel like right after we moved there and got settled, things just really started happening for us. Well, I mean, our revenue jumped up, our vehicles jumped up. I mean, our employees jumped up. It was more of a, uh, you know, our other place was so small at 54th yeah. that we were on top of each other in offices. <clears throat> and then we even took the apartment that we had upstairs and made it into offices too, just because we needed the room. Yeah. So yeah, we were on top of each other. But then when we moved to a hundredth, we didn't have that problem. We had lots of room. Everybody had their pretty much their own offices. Yeah, managers they spread did. Out. Dispatchers got spread out. So it wasn't so there. Mm-hmm. But you know, one thing I, <clears throat> you know, some of our older employees like, you know, ZB or something like that, that's been with us for quite some time in Barb. They all kind of miss that small atmosphere mm-hmm. because it was more family atmosphere. We still are, but you know, when you're pushing over 200 employees, the um, it's a little tougher to just do a barbecue real quick on the fly for 20 people than it would yeah. be to do it for a hundred people because we had a hundred people on staff that day. Yeah, things have so to be planned now. I know sure. that there was uh, the the great sides of things that we were growing and the business was expanding and our fleet was expanding and we we're doing better and financially and everything like that. And everybody else was too, but some of the nice things of the ambiance of being small was that, you know, we could probably take care of everything in the house when we had to wash all the vehicles. It would, three or four of us could yeah. pop it out in a couple hours. And now, you know, we take days to wash all of our vehicles yeah. now because there's just so many of them. So. And like taking care of the fleet, even oil yeah. changes, inspections. We had one like- mechanic then and he's sometimes a, a second part timer, but now, you know, we have three full time mechanics now. So. And, and we're looking for a fourth, by the way. Yeah. If you guys uh, want a good career, we are, we are looking for insurance, somebody dental, who vision, can do gasoline and diesel. So paid vacations. Yep. So <clears throat> yes. So we have closed this chapter with a hundred now. Um, and I just have to say thank you to Justin and Jessica Creech. Um, from Vulcan Towing. From Vulcan Towing. Yeah. They were. And their whole team. Their whole team. But <clears throat> under the umbrella of Justin and Jessica were just so willing to help us move vehicles, get things moved around and to help us with the yard. And, you know, um, 
just not realizing how much stuff that we had and how much stuff it really needed to be moved and towed and help other people. And, and in turn, I mean, they were able to tow so many people's motorhomes and boats and SUVs that they hired them for, because we definitely wanted to promote them on this thing yes. too, because they were so helpful in promoting mm -hmm. us. But just what they did for us personally, I could just say that it was just way and above than anything else. So we appreciate them well, both. You know, then their whole team coming back to their whole team, they were there for days helping us move things with loaders and forks and forklifts and connexes and just alone our stuff that we had to bring over to our yard too was probably 30 plus vehicles and yeah. connexes and things like that so uh, and we just appreciate our partnership a lot you know justin justin's relationship with you is more than a partnership he's oh, one is. of your good friends and one so it's friends. not it wasn't just <clears throat> the fact that he was there to help you tow he was there to like like support you in this transition because for I don't know about everyone else, but when you accumulate things and they are part of the history of your family or part of the history of your business, it's not always as easy to let things go. She says this, this, she's saying this for me. This isn't her idea. I can, I can tell you alone that <clears throat> I own my fire trucks, my ladder truck. I mean, I barely touch those things, but they're mine, you know? Yes, and yes. So there was some, um, there were some separation issues that I had, not Athena. She was always trying to get me to rid of things, but you know, you just, I'm always that mindset that you never know if you're going to need it. And, you know, we had some four wheel drive vans that were still good vans, but we didn't use them anymore because we upgraded it. And so there was a laundry list of things why we didn't get rid of things, but this really pushed that issue yes. that we don't need that clutter. We don't need that extra stuff. And, and uh, I call it leave and cleave like you would your parents, but this is kind of like my kids, my stuff here. So I was having a hard time leaving and cleaving. So feel way better that we are now thinned down. Mm -hmm. um, we got rid of some other old buses in our fleet too that we started off with. I mean, old, but good, great buses. Yes. And you know, I mean, our two twenty two passenger buses were amazing for us. It really put us on the map, especially when we started the captain cook contract. Yep. Uh, and then they just fell over to other things, but you know, they are, um, they were just old and tired and it was something for us to retire it. And then, you know, uh, Tom Tugas was so good about selling us two of the buses back in yeah, the day. Yeah, those were officially like our first two little mini coaches. Yeah, 31 and 35 passenger bus. And <clears throat> Tom was really good about setting us up. And Tom's just an amazing man. And Dennis McDonald and those guys really came alongside of us. And we, we just how we grew our business by the partnerships that yeah. we get with these people. So, you know, and I think something that maybe you haven't stopped and like, really sat in for a minute is the fact that even with that self-admitted, like there's some separation stuff going on with your stuff. It's like you faced that completely. Like oh, you, <laughs> you didn't put your head in the sand and be like, okay, you just take care of this. I'm like, that was something in, in that time I was, I'm just so grateful that you just handled the lot stuff. I put my head in the sand so many other ones that I felt like I had to, I had to, I had to man up a couple times on this one and really make sure this thing happened. And I know that you were stressed about what we were doing at the office. And it's summertime in Alaska and not the perfect time to move. And we had a tenant that wasn't so good about getting out on time. So yeah. um, it that, really that put us on the back layer. size and yeah. the delayer. Yeah. That there was a, a little things that threw some curves in there. And uh, it was just something I had to man up on and take care of. And it was a, uh, I was telling everybody I was taking like three showers a day because our, our old property used to be on a dirt property and we would, yes. we would put this uh, salt stuff down that would help it. Uh, keep the dust down. Keep the dust down. And of course we haven't done that in a few years cause we haven't been there. Yeah. So it was a dust bowl and I was And just, the wind was kicking uh, up. I mean, yeah, just it was horrible. coated. So I, <clears throat> I will always miss the hundredth property and you know, we had an opportunity to even purchase that property at the time. And it was just a little bit above what our, what we felt comfortable and that we could come up with and do. And it was a $15 million property. And so it wasn't something we felt comfortable with. So we were very appreciative of the new property we have on Hartzell yeah. now, 8040 Hartzell that we have really turned that price around. It was, um, it was definitely, uh, wasn't up to what we would call what we'd want. So we stuck a ton of money into that place and, remodeled and paved and painted made it, and made it just, how we wanted yeah, it. just made it kind of how we want to. And our team is so appreciative of it, you know, and they liked our old place because you don't know what you don't know. So it was the newer for us from the 54th property yeah, for the ones that and are then still now we're over here and it just gets better. And then I think they're looking for us to, if we ever decide to get bigger, what our next step is, but as you guys know, Anchorage is running out of land and properties yeah. and, and, and real estate. And you know, our, our place is probably appreciated 
probably 30 or 40% since we bought it. And uh, so it was a great investment. It was great for us. And and now knowing that we own our own property, mm-hmm. us and the bank, thank you, First National, um, that we are now just uh, um, making those payments. But, you know, we have a great place now and it's uh, really easy to call it our home and the employees do and they like it. And so, yeah, that was it's uh, like a little safe secure place behind a gate and secured doors. And, you know, the dirt is the one thing that used to make me crazy, even with the layer of salt stuff on the ground. It was, um, it was always a challenge. It was hard to keep it clean and the dust, uh, when in the wind. So I remember, I remember talking to McKenna brothers, Matt and Mark about it and having them come over and give us a bid for it. And, And it was such a staggering amount. I mean, to do like the three or four acres that we wanted to do at the time was like in the five or six hundred thousand dollar range. And yeah. we're just like, we didn't own this property. There's no way that we could afford to do it. And the property wasn't probably good enough at the time to lay pavement without really redoing it. It would have just it would, been it, wavy it just and been muddy, muddy and, and muddy we would have had to do yeah. massive dirt work. So it would have been it would have been way more expensive than we thought it was. So but yeah. uh the just store it lot was just amazing. I I, I really like that. It was uh it was a Good money maker. It was a- that was a crack up. I mean, so it got to the point where you were just people were calling you and and these these vehicles are getting parked on the lot. And so after a little while, I started thinking, all right, I might have to put some attention to this because this could end up getting messy. And so I came up with a a, a lease agreement for storage rental and gave it to the zero storage rental experience. Zero exactly. Zero. Like, we would rent places from people. Yes, That's that was our experience. Yes. We weren't the leasers of places. So I didn't want this to be a big distraction for the team. And I thought, okay, well, I got to probably put some process around this. Otherwise, it's just going to end up being a pain in the butt and we're going to deal with complaints. So we had our son do a drone and drone footed it. And then we had somebody else be able to sketch out all the spots and how much they're going to be yep. and how long they're going to be. And then we came up with numbers and we had lines and that was during the Jeff days and Jeff yep. was really helpful about going up there and stringing lines up and numbers. And you know, that's one thing I didn't grab as much of those numbers off the fence, but oh well, we did grab the lines and the, and the podiums that they set mm-hmm. on, but yeah, it was uh it was a good, it was really good. Uh, definitely uh, if, and when we do it again, and we probably will, <coughs> we'll definitely own the property the next time, but. Well, and that's the thing is it, it was, uh, it was something that we just were like, yeah, okay, this sounds like a good idea. And we didn't put a lot of energy to it and it just started to grow and grow and grow. And of course, hindsight, we would do some things differently, but. Yeah, it, a lot of things differently. The, the, at the end of it, we had over like, what was it? 150 tenants on the lot, something no, like that. Over 450 pieces of equipment, I think. Was there. Seriously? So I think, yeah. So I think it was like uh, over 300 people had something over there. Wow. And it was um, amazing. And, you know, <clears throat> like Justin, I mean, you know, we would share things back and forth and he'd put stuff over there and I put stuff at his place and stuff like that. But we had a lot of friends that had stuff over there. I mean, I, I in fact, when I was going through it just the other day, uh, John had a four wheeler there was parked there for six years. John who? John Head. Oh. And so I text John and said, hey, we got your stupid four-wheeler still here. What the <laughs> hell's... He's like, what four-wheeler? He forgot it was even there. And I had... <clears throat> and his nephews work for Vulcan, so I had them come and get it. And he's like... And then when I finally took a picture, he goes, you still have that thing? And I was like, yes, it's been here for six years, John. But we had some dear friends, Rochelle and some other ones yep. that had their family members had some stuff there. And we've had some clients there for, you know, almost the time that we started it. And it just really turned out to be a nice little business. And unfortunately, you know, I mean, there's just not enough storage places around town that, that would really be able to uh, absorb all the other ones that we um, got rid of. So it was just, yeah. I mean, we did, we did give um, several months notice and we, we called the people that we, I mean, it was calling, it was emailing. And then even then smoke it, signals, it was crazy. It, Me tracking down people. <laughs> I mean, it was just running plates. Yes, like yeah, it, was it was a crazy. very interesting thing. And so what, I find is so remarkable is you're dealing with selling your stuff that you've been holding on to, uh, craziness around people having expectations about how much notice they should give or, or whatever and complaint calls. 
And then also the move and the towing logistics and getting the building cleared out and the dumpsters and the shredders. Oh, and, and then the auction. And then the auction <coughs> The $8,000 like, in batteries to put into the auction. Yes, chip. We have and to get cutting to keys. And it's like, yeah, it was this a lot of work. really was like a massive endeavor that you handled inside of like I think it's like, you want to go to days. dinner tonight? I was like, hell no, I want to go to sleep. I don't want to go to dinner. I mean, See, I didn't, I'm stressed. I didn't even really think about it in the magnitude of what you just went through until I like had to sit down with myself and go, oh my gosh, like there's all these layers of moving completely out of this building. Yeah. We even had to ask for an extra week because our previous tenant wouldn't move out of there in a timely passion. They were. So we had to ask for an extra week to help get out our stuff on top of it. And I tell you, we were down to the last like hour and a half before we had to turn over the keys. And then yeah, it was just, uh, it was, it was uh, all the way down to the wire. And I, like I said, I can't, I can't say enough about Justin and Jessica because they stood by us every point of the way. I mean, to moving docks for Randy and Susan to, I mean, just this last minute stuff that was coming up. It was just like, Oh my word. I, 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 I cringed every time I had to call Justin cause I knew he just knew that I was going to ask for something. I just like, brother, I thank you so much. So yeah, <clears throat> I am glad that chapter is over. I will dearly miss our, our, our lot, but not that much to where it would have to go backwards. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to have to do that again. On those circumstances, definitely, uh, if we redid it again, we would definitely know the steps from the beginning to yeah. the end to make sure that we were a little bit more secured in what we did. But yeah, um, it ran really smoothly. And a lot of customers were really sad that we were shutting down. I mean, a lot of people were like, are you reopening somewhere else? Just let us know. You know, they were really happy because we kept it pretty easy for them. So. Yeah. So if you could do it all over again uh, and moving an operation from one building like that to another building and handling the logistics of towing stuff and shredding documents and like what what are some of the takeaways from this this last week and a half that you I just think not hold on to stuff for so long and you know we would have probably cut our our labors in half if we would have sold things as we went and we didn't need it I mean that's one of the things I think that we realize you know we still have that seven or eight more vans and a loader and some other stuff that we have to unload and there's another auction coming up that we might put them inside so I mean we're just uh how can we keep that place cleaner easier and where we're not holding on to a bunch of stuff. Now, remember we just came out of COVID a couple of years ago yeah. and vehicles were almost impossible to get. So another reason why we held on to a lot of the vans and things that we had and SUVs that we wouldn't have yeah. really held on that long because you we just weren't sure get if we were going to get yeah, then picking up new contracts and everything else like that. You know, you pick up another airline contract and you need another eight vans and we had like 14 extra vans. Mm -hmm. And so we sold a bunch of them in that auction. Now we have another auction. We'll sell some on and we'll just get rid of that stuff as we go and just kind of keep it more, <clears throat> I wouldn't say lean and tight, but just really figuring out what you really need to hang on to and what's making you money and what's not. Just the insurance on these things alone, you know, we're just yeah. pretty staggering. So, I mean, I think we're going to be on the upside when we leave all this. So we will uh, definitely be less clutter, less stuff. Less stuff to keep track of, less stuff to put plates on, ensure. A lot of titles I handed over. A lot of titles, yeah. And thank you for Copart for taking some of our stuff that we held on for a long time. Like I had this great idea that I was going to take these three Torags and make it into one because I thought they were cool little cars. Well, we were, that was we were years flipping ago. cars back then and fixing cars and it was kind of like a side thing. So. Yeah, and that side thing's kind of over. We just realized yeah. that we're just not that those people. You know, our business grew so much that, you know, um, it, it really didn't warrant the time to put into those yeah. because the ROI wasn't out there as much as it was to just keep on track. You know, and I think that that's a really important point is there are things that we decide are important in our life that are um, distracting us away from the main revenue stream that we should be focusing in on. Yeah. And, um, and it's not just sometimes you've got this little side hustle over here and then you got your main stuff over here. It can be like volunteer work. It can be, like a hobby that's taking up too much of your time. It's, it, it's in, that's one of the things that we've really worked is staying in this vein of transportation. And as the company grew, we were just like, there was a few opportunities that came up here and there, but I think as box started to grow, like we, we were doing uh, RV sales in the summertime where we were RV renting rentals. out RVs. I mean, we were just doing all these other little things and it was like really where box started to really get some solid traction. And I think is when we stopped doing so many other things. Well, I mean, your source of revenues are always, you want to make sure that you have plenty of senses or sources of revenue to make sure that we were coming up with things. Cause 
we were in a constant growth series. So, yeah. you know, when you were buying sixty or seventy thousand dollar vans back in the day and you were affording two or three of those, I mean that was a lot of money for us back in the day to do that and and um now we've realized the maintenance on the vehicles, everything else on it, it's just better to keep them new and keep them right under 100,000 miles than dump them. I mean, just get new ones. I mean, there's still good life in them, but it's a secondary life. And we used to be the secondary life people that yeah. we bought vehicles that were used and we bought them. And now we've just come to a season in our stuff that we're just turning and rolling our vehicles over and getting brand new ones. And getting It's better for our customers. It's better for our maintenance shop. It's better for... The staff, if we're constantly reviving the fleet. And so that's something that we realize. Plus, we need the write offs. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yes. Yes. We've been, we, that's for sure. And then our employees are much happier. I mean, you know, when they get into a new vehicle, they have pride in it. And they yeah. <clears throat> like the newness and they like the compliments and the, definitely the tips and just makes it nicer for all. And it's easier for them to keep clean. So. Yeah. You know, uh, is there any advice that you can give people who are like on the fence about, do I take this stretch to this next bigger property or? Well, you got to look and say, you know, where, what's your capacity at now? Where are you at now? So like, um, we have a friend that has a shop here in town and I'm not going to mention his name, but you know, he's called me up several times today. Hey, I have an opportunity to get another shop next door to me or I have something that's coming up. You know, what do you think about this? And I'm like, you know, how many employees do you have right now? And he's like, you know, he's struggling just like everybody else to get employees or good qualified employees. Right. And <clears throat> he's like five. And I'm like, well. In a specialty field too. In a specialty field. And I said, well, then how many, how many spots do you have open in your garage right now? It's summertime and summertime's not as busy as time. And, and there's like four or five open spots. And I'm like, do you really need to take on another shop at this time? I mean, and can you get the, the people to do it? I, the work is enough there for them. It's just the specialized people to be able to do it. So <clears throat> we've had that talk several times and I guess one of his employees, he just called me the other day about it. And one of his employees says, Hey, this other shop's coming open. We should take it over here. And he's like, bro, look at this, go look in their shop. Do we need another shop right now? And, you know, and, and, uh, you know, I've had this conversation with Justin and stuff like that too, because they expand their, their company has just doubled and tripled where they were from mm -hmm. when we first met them. And, uh, they've expanded into some other areas too, but they will lease out some of the spots that some of the area that they don't need so they can keep it there. So it makes their rent very reasonable. They have another yeah. spot and another place to put it. So, you know, I mean, I think it's, I don't have anybody that really has all the secret sauce of how to do things. I think we just collaborate as a bunch of business owners and a bunch of entrepreneurs and say, does this make sense? Because sometimes if my wife tells me something that makes sense, it doesn't make sense to me because she's telling me, but if Justin tells me, I can understand yes. it. And I try to understand her more and I try to understand, um, where we're going, but sometimes you just have to hear it from a source that is not as close as it is. And I, I hope that makes sense. Like sometimes we can tell our kids something and it doesn't make sense that we tell them, but one of our best friends or one of our friends or close family friends will tell them and they'll understand it completely. Yeah. So I think sometimes there's a disconnect in that. And uh, it's neat to have these relationships with all these different other people that you can bounce ideas off of and talk to. And Brent's one of them too. I talk and brag. I ask him advice and some things on there, especially when it comes to real estate. You know, we're getting our more properties now that we yeah. have. And <clears throat> sometimes you just have to hear it from somebody else to, to reassure that we're doing the right thing. You know, the community piece is, um, I think really what you're talking about is we're not as business owners, depending on the size of your organization, you're at the top. And sometimes the top can be really lonely. And if you decide that you're not going to step into some vulnerability and get kind of close to some of these other people that you trust or that are in places that you want to be, then um, it, it's going to be really lonely and scary. And you're going to have uh, the imposter syndrome creeping up on you all the time. And so if, if there's one piece that I think you're trying to say, it's like without that community – it, it makes things more difficult. It does. And especially for us because, like, I was reminded of that time we were skeet shooting and I was trying to give you oh some tips and you were just not having it. And we were a lot younger back then. It was more of a competition. It wasn't more of an advice. It was like she was out shooting me. <laughs> well, and I wasn't intentionally Pride. out shooting you. No, she was because I, she was a better shot. I was shot. just shooting. She was a better <laughs> shot was the thing. when it comes to ducks. <laughs> But the, the point is, is that um, especially when you're working with your partner, it's like being in, being intentional about that. Like if, if there is, if there's someone who could explain it better, then get your partner in front of that person. And, and, and if it still is like, no, we're not aligned on that, then, then maybe you don't do it. 
You know, I think it, I, I think sometimes it comes down to what our vision is and what our partner's vision is. And sometimes they don't align 100%. They're, they might be going down the same road, but they might not be on the same lane. But we're trying to head the same way. And so sometimes I think we all try to get reassurance that we're doing the right thing for us or whatever else is. And sometimes somebody could see it so much easier because they're outside the circle and yeah. they're only trying to help us. There's no, there's no financial impact to them. There's no recourses to them. So they're just going to give us their best answer. And, you know, we do that all the time. I mean, even Matt, I'll call Matt McKinnon and talk to him about things and just, you know, what's his view on this? Because he runs a very successful, him and his brother, Mark run a very successful business. And we want to be around like meaning people that are successful in businesses. So Sometimes just getting their take on something or how a person does business or whatever yeah. it is. I mean, I bought a loader from Richie Brothers and and he's like, Hey, there were some things wrong with it. And he's like, just contact them. They're really good about it. And when we did, they 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 helped us with it. And uh but it was like, you know, we bought something from an auction. So it's like you see as is, where is, yeah. how is Yeah, and, well it happened to be the auction house. <clears throat> yeah. Sold and so it, there was so. auction house selling their own loader. And so yes. but I mean, they made it right. And that's what we look for is like, how do we make it right? And so talking to some of these guys were like, Hey, just call these people and talk to them and tell them what happened. And they're all about making things right as we are, you know, but you feel kind of awkward because you don't have that relationship. I didn't have much of a relationship. And some of these guys have already done a lot of business with these guys. So they have the relationship. So they, so they, they were schooling better. me to try to tell me what to do to get in the right spot. And that's what I think we should all be doing. I mean, <clears throat> as, as business owners and other people, um, we should be helping other people. I mean, we didn't all get here because we just fell off this tree and we knew everything. We, yeah. we fell, we fell off the tree and we rolled and we fell off another tree and we rolled and we figured it out one way or another, but somebody helped us up one day. Somebody and- helped us up one day. I mean, you know, there's so many people, I can only tell you that how many people that really went through the Rochelle was a huge part of us and Rochelle Edlin from the Captain Cook. I mean, she really took me by her side, helped me on some boards, helped me get yeah. some things, really meet some people. And those people are your biggest advocates or they're your biggest, uh, supporters helpers so those are the people that you really want to surround yourself around and uh the the transportation industry the uh the tourism industry i mean just uh, the oil industries the medical industry i mean there's just so many different people there that you can call up anytime and you can ask them some questions and they're going to give you your best advice you know as long as you're not trying to hurt them or take business away from them you know they just working with them yeah yeah you know um i I don't know if i've said this to you yet but Thank you for every single thing that you did to coordinate everything. Oh, you have. Thank you. I appreciate that. I, I, I know that I you can't just even, wanted something else on your plate. <laughs> I just can't even tell you. Like, I, I don't know. I, there isn't a lot of things that I have that I don't have attachment to. And so I don't know how much or how tr- how hard it was for you to let go of some of that stuff, especially like your fire truck stuff. Yeah, you know, I, I think earlier on it would have been harder for me, but <clears throat> as we didn't use them and, you know, nothing ventured, nothing gained, we've always had these great ideas about things, the mobile ad trucks, you know, we've had different ideas that we were going to do super well. And I love the fire and EMS industry and I've always have. And so I thought, hey, we'll just do this Alaska fire for hire. We'll do kids' birthday parties and functions events. Yes. And, and it sounded all great and it had great potential and it really could have built itself up. But <sighs> I just realized there was so much liability around it and there was hoses, and there was equipment, and there was tools and high you know, pressure hose. high pressure hoses. But you know, the, the thrill the kids got off of being able to pull an inch and a half line off it and be able to go ahead and, uh, you know, spray water and have fun. And just, you know, it was just so much, it was so cool for them to be able to do things like that. And we had little fire suits for them and it was just super fun. But at the end of the ball game, it wasn't really what we should have been doing. It was it was more of a distraction than it was a, a money maker, but it was fun at the time. And sometimes those are good. Some of those are great businesses too, because you have to have that decompression. You have to have that place where you can go have fun doing things. I mean, some people say, Charlie, why do you go wash cars? And I'm like, yeah, it's mindless. It's easy. It's it's I don't have a have to make a lot of decisions on it. I gotta put soap on the vehicle and I gotta soap it off and I gotta dry it. But sometimes just those mental things for you to be able to do something mindless is 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 better. And if everybody knows me, I mean, I don't even have an office on our new building. We have we have office spaces that we can go into, but I mean I don't break over my laptop very much. If I can't do it on my phone, I mean that's pretty much me. Um Athena is more the technical person. She runs the whole back of the house and the employees and stuff more the visionary and I, I see things and I want to make things happen. And you know, sometimes she's got to pull me down to ground and I don't think I ever pull you down to the ground. I, I just, um, down the ground a couple of times, right? I just don't always get on board with everything that you want to do. Well, and, and I know that if I don't push paperwork to make it happen, then, um, 
then it's less likely that it'll happen. So I just see how interested you are in it at first. And if it ends up growing interest, then like the lot rental, you just kind of did your thing. And then as I saw it actually becoming something that I needed to probably make money, <laughs> um, then it was like, okay, I, I need to get, get around this. But if you came to me and said, this is something that I absolutely feel passion around. Like when you brought that first fire truck home, I was like, let's just, let's just um, call this what it is. This is your hobby. You don't have to try to pretend that you're going to do any business activity with it. Like we I did get some, it. not a lot. And mm-hmm. you know what's ironic is that truck ended up being in my name. I don't even know how the hell that happened. I'm sure you but, filled out the paperwork. Um, I was like, what the... <laughs> How did, how did that happen? Which one? The engine, the engine the truck. Left? I we we. Uh, I was like, how did I get on the title? Like, what the? So I just figured that was just irony or whatever. But um, and you know, I did have some girlfriends. They're like, man, how do you even like deal with that? Like, if my husband brought home a fire truck, like I don't even know what I'd say. I think I might freak out. And I was like, well, I just tell myself that at least it's not a helicopter. Helicopter wasn't on the plate at the time. We didn't have money for a helicopter. (laughs) It was like, I, the point of it is, is that one thing I know about you is you don't really have hobbies. And so when you get interested in something Mm -hmm. like having something fun that you can drive, that honestly didn't cost us a lot of money compared to some of the stuff we drive these days. And it, it was, that was like your little hobby of like highlight and fun. And I saw that for what it was. It's not like you have... You don't play pinochle or cards on Thursday or whatever, you know, you, you, you don't really have those consistent things. And so when these things show up, uh, that's what I saw them as. And I think we're so busy building our business. And I I can tell you one thing, people that one thing we can't buy back is time. And that's the most important thing. And it takes a long time to get that wisdom to figure that out. And some people, they figure it out sooner, but yeah. One thing we can't buy back is time. So you can't buy back years of your kids' education or their years of going through elementary school, junior high, and stuff like that. And we were so busy focused on building the business and the business was coming in and we were trying to get out of debt and we were trying to get into a positive place. We are trying to buy homes. We were trying to have secondary uh, money coming in from those that we were just really just focused. So, I mean, we'd go on the occasional fishing trips and when Sean had come down, we'd all go down to Kenai. I mean, we had our, our trips and we usually always had a motor home and one sort of another. Yeah. And some so kind we of got a motor to go, home yeah, that so. you may or may not be happy using. Yeah. I, I mean, know. they were hoopties, but you know, I mean, now we got a nice <laughs> one. Now we go travel on that one. So, I mean, it's, it's all just relative where you're at in life. Yeah. And so we're in a different place in our life now. So. I don't think I need to hold on to things as much as there because those were my assets, you know, and you, when we see some people that have that and we have some relatives that are the same way that they hold on to a lot of things and you know, what you have is what you have sometimes, but when you have things coming in and it's not, you're not so attached to them anymore, it's so much easier to let them go. You know, it's just, it's on to new and better things. Well, and like you said before, had we decided that we were going to let them go a while back, we probably would have had, they would have been worth more. They would have been in better shape. You know, and you know, you never know. I mean, they could have been worth more then, but you know, vans were pretty cheap back then because there was an abundance of vans going around and there was a lot of used stuff going around. But then as things went up in price, you know, there was... Especially right after COVID. Yeah, I mean, yeah. vehicles are worth double or triple what they were as used vehicles. So, I mean, it, there was... I never question the time or whatever happens. It just happens when it happens. Well, you know, and I think this is a perfect time to just kind of um, end with the plug for Alaska premier auctions because well, I did plug Dan and, and I don't, his team, I, <laughs> but they I did am a great just job. so amazed at how easy they made this for us. Yes. The entire experience, it was like, they are so professional and they just have each step outlined and dialed in. They came, they said, what are we cataloging? And they got like waved at a few things like in these spaces. And then they just took it all. And then I'm like trying they to get some of my stuff back. Everything. <laughs> I was like, like, hey, they got, they got my, they got my jacket t-shirts. from the fire department, my t-shirts, my, my Girdwood jacket and all this other stuff. We but had a they loft. were super great. They were super great about, hey, just let us know what you want and, and we can do this. And they were really great about it. And Dan, his team were just amazing. I'm like, 
logging all the way from making sure we got batteries in the vehicles to cutting keys to moving the vehicles. Meeting contractors. To, yeah. And, I mean, and really, the, there's some stuff that we had up in the loft of the shop that we hadn't been into in a long time. So they, like there's years. no way we would have known that that no. was in a tote and, until they took a picture of it and posted it. So... But it worked out perfectly. It wasn't yeah. their fault. We nope. just told them to go ahead and sell it and get rid of everything that we didn't want to grab things for. So they did it. And and they never got frustrated. They never, nope. they, they kept it so 100% gracious. Together. And, you know, I think that's really something important when you're working with somebody who possibly does have an attachment to like some of their stuff. That's their business. It's, it almost kind of reminds me of the, um, the, the type of personality that you have to have in order to be a funeral director. You just have to have this compassion and this kindness because this, this can be a difficult season for whoever, whether it's estate sales or um, li- business liquidations, but going from, uh, I mean, they even had a title person there at the end, making sure that all the vehicles that we sold got titled into the new owner's name. So there wasn't anything left hanging out and we were going to deal with drama later. Yeah, that was, was impressive. It was, it, was, it was good. And and then Great right job. after everything, they, they did exactly what they said they were going to do. And it was a it was a seamless process. So I just I'm like I they, they've got my business forever. Yeah, they did a good job. really appreciate them. So, well, we're so grateful that you guys stopped to check in and Again. and uh, we will see you next time. Crazy adventures. Bye. Bye.